Hello, this is my second video on fascism. What's my third video on fascism? I wanted to do a lot on fascism, or at least an extra video, but the other night the computer wasn't working well. I shot it, I shot it on another older system, and I didn't like the way it looked, so we're just gonna do this, and tomorrow we're gonna deal with multiculturalism, and what that means. Uh, I just need to check one thing. Uh, and I want to make sure that I'm reading from the right place. I'm not shooting two videos, two of the same videos. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, good. Good, good, good. All right. We're going to be dealing with the struggle. Fascism. Oh, wait a minute. Do I do leadership and elitism? I think we should do fascism and the state. Oh, corporatism, maybe. Maybe we should do that. Eh, let's deal with the struggle. I think because we, we need to deal with the mindset. And um, I think this might help a little more. The ideas... Okay, rationalism. No, I think I did this one. Let's do, let's do, let's do, eh, I don't want to do corporatism. Let's do, oh, let's do fascism and racism. <laughs> That's a great one. Fascism and racism. Not all forms of fascism involve overt racism, and not all races are necessarily fascist. Italian fascism, for example, was based primarily on the supremacy of the fascist state over the individual and on submission to the will of Mussolini. But wasn't Mussolini in Africa subjugating? I don't know. Trying to fight Ethiopia? It was therefore a voluntaristic form of fascism. And that, at least in theory, it could, be, it, could be, it could embrace all people regardless of race, color, or indeed country of birth. When Mussolini passed anti-Semitic laws after 1937, <clears throat> he did so largely to placate Hitler and the Germans, rather than for any ideological purpose. Nevertheless, fascism has often coincided with, excuse me, and bred from racist ideas. Indeed, some argue that its emphasis on militant nationalism means that all forms of fascism are either hospita hospitable to racism or harbor implicit and explicit racist doctrines. That would be my camp. I would be in that camp. Nowhere has this link between race and fascism been so evident as in Nazi Germany. I would say the United States, but where official ideology at times amounted to little more than hysterical, pseudoscientific anti-Semitism. I would say United States and eugenics movement, but politics of race. The term race implies that there are meaningful biological or genetical differences among human beings. While it may be possible to drop one national identity and assume another by a process of naturalization, it is impossible to change one's race determined as it is at birth. Indeed, before birth, by the racial identity of one's parents. The symbols of race, skin tone, hair color, physiology, physiognomy and blood are thus fixed and unchangeable. The use of racial terms and categories become became commonplace in the West during the 19th century as imperialism brought the predominantly white European race into increasingly close contact with black, brown, and yellow races of Africa and Asia. 
However, racial categories largely reflect cultural stereotypes and enjoy little, if any, scientific foundation. Just like the bell curve here. The broadest racial classifications, for example, those based on skin color, white, brown, yellow, and so on, are at best misleading and were simply arbitrary. More detailed and ambitious racial theories, such as those of the Nazis, simply produced anomalies, one of most glaring being the Adolf Hitler himself certainly did not fit the racial stereotype of the tall, broad-shouldered, blonde-haired, blue-eyed Aryan commonly described in Nazi literature. It was always weird. Just goes to show you, people just want to follow and want to be uh, violent when there's bitterness. When bitterness is built up in you and you've been treated badly for too long, it spills out and you'll follow anybody. The core, as long as they're making you feel better about that bitterness. The core assumption of racism is that political and social conclusions can be drawn from the idea that there are innate or fundamental differences between the races of the world. At heart, genetics determines politics. Racist political theories can be traced to biological assumptions as illustrated in 7.2. So I'm gonna show you the, the illustration. All right. Uh, now I'm going to where I was. A form of implicit racism has been associated with conservatives, conservative nationalism. This is based on the belief that stable and successful societies must be bound together by a common culture and shared values. For example, Enoch Powell in the UK in the 1960s and Jean-Marie Le Pen in France since the 1980s have argued against non-white immigration into their countries on the grounds that the distinctive traditions and culture of the white host community would be threatened. I think Le Pen's daughter or granddaughter was running for president and she gets a lot of votes today, now. So she may be the new leader of France soon. However, more systemic, systematic and developed forms of racism are based on explicit assumptions about the nature, capacities, and destinies of different racial groups. In many cases, thus, these assumptions have had a religious basis. For example, 19th century European imperialism was justified in part by the alleged superiority of a Christian peoples of Europe over the heathen peoples of Africa and Asia. Biblical justification was also offered for doctrines racial segregated, segregation preached by the Ku Klux Klan. Formed in the USA after the American Civil War and by the founders of the apartheid system, which operated in South Africa from 1948 until 1993. We should have came up with a new kind of Maybe black people should have came should have came up with a different kind of Christianity. I mean, the Klan are Christians. Um, I've been reading the Gnostic Bible lately, and the Gnostics were much better a form, a more relatable form of Christianity to me. Um, I don't know if other black people would have liked it or not, but I found it. Some parts of it kind of similar to what the five percenters were doing, um, but much better look at Eve, Mary, um, Jesus in the Gospels, very heavy emphasis on the Gospels, and um, I just thought it was better. It's a better form of Christianity to me, if you're going to choose one. <coughs> So, well, we well, are. Well. In Nazi Germany, however, racism was rooted in biological and therefore quasi scientific assumptions, biologically based racial theories, as opposed to those that are linked to culture or religion, 
are particularly militant and radical because they make claims about the essential and inescapable nature of a people <coughs> excuse me that was supposedly backed up by the certainty and objectivity of science scientific belief and um Let's do one more chapter. Nazi race theories. Not chapter, paragraph. Nazi, Nazi ideology was fashioned out of a combination of racial anti-Semitism and social Darwinism. Anti-Semitism had been a force in European politics, especially in Eastern Europe, since the dawn of the Christian era. Its origins were largely theological. The Jews were responsible for the death of Christ. And in refusing to convert to Christianity, they were both denying the divinity of Jesus and endangering their own immortal souls. Um, I'm going to talk more about that when we deal with this new Israel situation. The association between the Jews and evil was therefore not a creation of the Nazis, but dated back to the Christian Middle Ages, a period when the Jews were first confined in ghettos and excluded from respectable society. However, anti-Semitism intensified in the late 19th century. As nationalism and imperialism spread throughout Europe, Jews were subjected to increasing persecution in many countries. In France, this led to the celebrated Dreyfus Affair, 1894 to 1906 and in Russia it was reflected in a series of pogroms carried out against the Jews by the government of Alexander III <clears throat> there are a lot of Christian Zionists who are backing up Israel right now these people think that you're going to have a war one more last religious war Christ comes back and clears out that land then once they clear out all the Palestinians and all the godless people these Christian fascists are going to convert all of you Jews and then they're going to um, make you all Christians or you will be gone so you can keep taking weapons from from these Christian Zionists. You can keep taking support from them and backing from them, but they don't like you. And you're playing a very dangerous game. I don't know. Well, I'm not monetized anyway, so I can say what I want. You you must be uh, careful, people in Israel. You must be careful. I think a, a lot of Jews in the United States know this. That's why they're saying. You must end this occupation and you must have some kind of two-state solution. Two-state solution is the only solution for the Palestinians. If they become one state, Palestinians are going to be like black people in the United States, like Harriet Tubman's children in the United States. They're going to be locked in to second-class citizenship infinitely until the systems of Israel break down. And by that time, your, their minds will be, have been so brutalized and they will have been so conditioned, just like black people here, that they won't even be able to take advantage of their own freedom. That's what is happening to us today. 2020 was the year we, we were actually supposed to be actually free. We couldn't take advantage of it. And we went back to, or we are trying to go back but you see, you have a large group of ruling class that want something different. They're tired of the plantation. They don't need it anymore. We have machines. We have technology. We don't need blacks to do all the dirty work. We don't need Spanish to do all the dirty work. We don't need that. I'm telling you from their perspective. That's what's, that's what's happening. Um, so we're in a very interesting time. Maybe Palestinians could skip all that, what we went through, but I doubt it. If you become one state under Israeli law, they're going to give you the right to vote. You're going to have all these civil rights. In practice, they're going to make sure it's, it's, it's difficult to express your civil rights. They're going to harass you. So you won't have checkpoints, but you'll have stop and frisk. 
you need a two state solution. I don't care if people saying it's almost impossible. Like it, the only way Palestinians will be free and will have any respect is if it's a two state solution. That one state stuff ain't gonna work. It's not gonna work. And if you want to see how it would look for, for Palestinians in a one state, come to the United States and look at what happens to black people. Prisoned, um, unemployment, um, scattered and fractured families, scattered and fractured uh, uh, communities. Uh, falling into gangsterism for family support. You don't want that. You want a two-state solution and run your state. Better to have your own state struggling than be perpetually trapped in second-class, sometimes third-class citizenship. So I'm said enough for that. I'm going to do next week. We're going to do... Uh, what did I say I was going to do? We're going to do multiculturalism, did I say? I think we're going to do multiculturalism. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, multiculturalism, yeah, I think we're going to do that uh, next week. So, I'll see you. What should I do? What should I do? Um... Or should I do environmentalism? Maybe I'll do that. That's that's more important. Green ideology. Green ideology. Let's see. Yeah, we'll do green ideology next week. Um, because that's important. We're going to have another hot summer. Floods, hurricanes, all kinds of things. So we need to talk about the ecology and we need to talk about um, how we're going to get out of this mess or can we survive it so that'll be tomorrow if I'm here if I'm, if I'm still with us and um, support hit all the links or hit the links you think you might need you can donate um, subscribe you know what to do and um, please, it's going to be a rough, hard summer. Take care of yourselves and be safe.